In this video lesson, we'll explain how the economic development of the colonies altered the patterns of social prestige and wealth and brought growing class distinctions and class conflict to British North America, and we'll indicate the key qualities of daily existence in 18th century colonial America, including forms of socialization and recreation. In this picture, you can see the uh, specific roads, main arteries, that were used for colonists traveling from colonial town to colonial town. By 1770, the majority of free citizens in British North America had a higher standard of living than the majority of people living elsewhere in the Atlantic world, which was a very unique achievement, even considering how few were wealthy. Agriculture was the leading industry of the colonies, involving approximately 90% of the population. In New England, merchants dominated the economy. They were the new center of trade between local folks and international markets. At the base of New England's diversified economy were farmers who served as a vital link between farms and markets around the world. In towns and coastal cities, merchants served as middlemen, exporting dried fish, livestock, flour, and timber to other colonies or overseas markets. Merchants stocked imported goods for local sale, such as English textiles, metal goods and ceramics, West Indian sugar, Chinese and English tea, and Chesapeake tobacco. Take a moment to look at the map pictured here where you can see the different areas of the colonies and which colonies were involved in sea industries, in forest industries, in general industries, and in agriculture and trapping. In larger towns like Boston, skilled artisans such as shoemakers, carpenters, wheelwrights, shipwrights, cabinet makers, silversmiths, and printers could be found. The middle colonies, Pennsylvania and New York, New Jersey and Delaware, became what's called the breadbasket of the North American colonies, exporting grains and cattle to other colonies or the wider Atlantic world through the New England merchants. In the Chesapeake region of the Upper South and the Lower South, colonial economies centered on production of rice, indigo, and economies centered on production of tobacco and grain products. Over time, a thriving coastal trade developed between New England's North American colonies and their connections, which tied them closely together in the 18th century. In addition, a thriving triangular trade grew between New England, the West Indies, and Europe. The latter triangular trade involved a shipment of New England dried salted codfish and other products to the West Indies. West Indian export of molasses and sugar to New England. New England export of rum to Africa in exchange for the export of slaves to the West Indies and the sale of English finished goods in the colonies exchange for dried fish, timber products, and tobacco. The triangular trade route, as it's called, can be seen here in this map, where slaves would be taken from Africa and they would be traded for goods and then taken to the West Indies where they were traded for rum or molasses and then exported to the colonies, which would then send the colony, send the materials to Great Britain. And then it would begin all over again with the triangular trade route, taking goods from Europe back to the West Coast of Africa to trade for slaves. Naval stores selling tar, pitch, rosin, turpentine, and other wood products became increasingly important to England as it determined to maintain its stance as master of the seas. This situation created an imbalance and made it difficult for colonists to earn enough hard currency to pay for what they wanted from England. As the triangular trade developed, American colonists began demanding more British products. Conversely, the slower growing British population reached a colonial saturation point for products that were imported from America. Americans ultimately chose to develop trade with foreign markets to earn the hard currency demanded by British exporters, trade that was considered smuggling by English authorities because it violated mercantilist policies. Within Britain's North American colonies, communication and trade had limitations, the result of an inadequate amount of money 
and a scarcity of labor to build effective transportation networks. In 1733, Parliament, under pressure from the British West Indian planters, passed the Molasses Act, designed to stifle North American trade with the French West Indies. Despite the new law, American international trade and smuggling continued, often through bribery of customs officials and others paid to look the other way. Not until the 18th century did dirt roads begin to connect even the major colonial cities such as Boston, Philadelphia, and New York. In the summer months, roads were choked with dust. In the winter, they became quagmires of mud and snow, and travelers had to contend with the possibility of accidents. Consequently, colonial populations tended to cluster along the main routes of travel, whether they were roads or rivers, and in and around towns and cities. Public accommodations and amusements were also located along the main travel routes, offering rest and relaxation to travelers. Public opinions cr crystallized uh, around issues of the day. They served one of the several cradles of democracy. Colonial taverns offered food and drink, rooms and billiards, bowling alleys, gambling, card games, and other comforts. They also served as places for people of all social classes to mingle and exchange information and rumors and engage in political discussions. Taverns became important mediums through which the colonies communicated.